Baker salutes to goes back to back in Vegas. There it is. And welcome everyone to Las Vegas. Q Sports International and Predator, along with Rumza Puerto Rico, present the Predator Pro Billiard Series, the Las Vegas Open. 96 players, $100,000 prize fund, 30,000 for the winner. Well, 96 players began their quest for this $30,000 first prize, and we are down to stage two. The final 32, single elimination rounds. The game is 10 ball, races to four. A deciding set if they split sets at the beginning. And if that deciding set is tied at three, it goes to a shootout. This is George Teja with Eric Horlifson bringing you the live action. What a match we have. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Good to be with you guys again. Got Josh Filler, a player who's won everything in the world of billiards, against John Mora, one of the strongest North American players, definitely the strongest player from Canada. About 40 points in Fargo that separate them, but I think there's about 40 points that separate Filler and almost everybody in Fargo. <laughs> this yeah. This race length I think it's not going to make too much of a difference. John's been playing really well as of late. Just won the Jay Swanson Memorial beating Shane Van Boning twice and I believe another a Carlo Beato in that tournament. Filler of course won three of the four three of the four events at uh, the Derby City with over 400 players in two of those events so he's he's in stroke. We're in for a good one here. Oh he put on he put on a clinic at Derby City. And John, uh, the Jay Swanson, I understand, played extremely well, too. Must have, to be yeah. chained twice in Carlo. Yeah. Well, his, his uh, previous matches together, he's undefeated. He defeated Stephen Holdham in a shootout and then played Alex Pagaline and won in straight sets. Uh, Joshua, on the other hand, uh, lost a match. He defeated David Yonan and then lost to Roland Garcia in a shootout. Uh, then defeated Sina Valizadeh, and uh, here he is facing John Mora. And all that loss is erased because we're in the final 32 and it's a single elimination. John caught the cut side of the rack there. Not sure if he was going for that strategy or if he just mishit it to the left. We'll see as the match goes on. Made a ball. Made two balls, actually. No shot on the one. Could be the thinnest of caroms going into the nine. Nah. He'll want to be offensive against Josh. Josh can defend himself in pretty much any way possible so he'll want to stay at the table as much as he can you, you know with uh john playing more one pocket now i think it's it's improved his safety game i think it's really made him a much more rounded player like he had to be right i mean he doesn't have to be but he's just getting more and he's just bit better and better yeah he's a consummate professional sure. plays in 30 major tournaments a year always in the mix gets near the end of matchroom tournaments kind of looking for couple real big titles under his belt but even the mid-level ones he's won a he's won a bunch of them great player very dangerous he, yeah, he just won the texas open uh in banks uh then third at guitar and nine ball he's as you just said the consummate professional fillers come up short on the safe here first uh the eight might have got him john will have a kick at this one He'll be going at it. Uh, does he have room to go rail first? It sure looks like it. Yeah, it'll be a rail first. Not great position on the three, but still looking to stay at the table here. Nice try. Barely overcut it. So first good uh -oh. chance of the rack to fill her. Three and the eight are tied up. Can draw back to try to play the three in the same pocket as the one. Checking to see if there's room for the combo. He'll, <laughs> he'll attack that if he can. You know, it's it's funny. As soon as the 10 ball hangs in front of a pocket, everybody's checking for the freebie. Yeah, he just has enough room past the 10. It, well, he called the 3, so he's going to play the 3 off the 10. Less cue ball movement in this pattern. Ten ball combos out of the equation now, but Filler's right in line here to take the first rack. Both these players are going to be looking to put breaking runs together. Oh sure. This is this is one set where a player can be leading 3-0 and still not be out of the woods because the other player can just just as fast 
catch them and, uh, and win the set. It's winter breaks. John and Filler must have played a couple times. Not exactly sure their match record. John's beat every good player in the world. I know that. Josh is doing what he does out, out there. I feel like in the last six months or so, he's kind of got to the point where he's a little more cautious around the table. His general MO is to be really fast and freewheeling, but he's kind of settled into his own where he's being a little bit more careful. It's paying off for him. Really arguably the, the best player in the world. Oh, wow, what a difference we have here. Uh, on the head-to-head -head matches, uh, they've played what seems to, they only have four matches listed, but on the common opponents, Joshua has beat them 60% compared to John's 48.5%. Sure. Um, That's how you get one of the top Fargos sure. in the world. And uh, Joshua defeated John just recently at the Derby City, of course, in the Bigfoot Challenge, 10-3. to three. And then 11-4, um, to four, that's way back in 19. John's, John's been playing so much better now. Uh, making that transition from uh, right-handed to left-handed. It's four years ago, so he's yep. playing much better, especially at, on the left-handed side. But, uh, yeah, there's not much information on their head-to-head -head matches as far as Fargo goes here. thought I had some good stuff, but what I do see and stands out is that uh, uh, almost a 12% difference in their uh, uh, success against common opponents. Filler going from the side rail as well. Be looking to make the one on the side. Just tracking that way. Got kicked out on the way there. Kind of a messy spread here all on the left side of the table. I wonder if he didn't break that way on purpose to get that kind of a defensive spread that he has here. Yeah, well, that's the backup plan from breaking yeah. with breaking from the side rail. If you don't make the one on the side, it's going to be less likely for your opponent to run the full rack. Going to be a bit of moving involved in this rack, particularly with the four, not, not passing into the most obvious pocket. I was talking with one of the top pro players uh, on this tour, I guess, one that's played quite a bit of uh, uh, pro billiard series. He's saying he's kind of changing his thinking and playing a little bit more of a defensive break than, than the offensive because anybody, all these guys can get out with this. And so if you don't uh, make a ball in the break with the hand rack, uh, it's curtains, so he's going more for a defensive, defensive style on the break. Yeah, I think I think if we did, if we did some long stats on the pocketing percentage, mm -hmm. even making a ball off the break, I think it would be close to fifty percent, and the break and run percentage would be closer to twenty percent. So really, going all in offense off the break, it's tempting, of course, and it, you know, in certain matches, it it can line up to a strong win, but in the long run. I think this tournament is about, you know, your kicking, your saves, and throwing in a few br break and runs if it happens. It's not really an offensive yeah. thinking style of rule set. I, I think so, but but it's hard to move from from uh, your regular play of uh, of offense. No doubt. So you have to make the adjustment here. John's going to be trying to kick this one in the corner. A lot of speed here to hold the angle. Ooh. Unlucky roll there. Filler might consider three fouls, just because the second foul is pretty much guaranteed. Or the second hook. Balls are open, though. He's going to go after it. Six eight combo is pretty wired to the point where if you do make the eight, the six is going to be very controllable. Just kind of stay in the same area. I 
I don't mind playing the three off the nine here, just releasing the nine from that spot on the rail there, which is not a not a great spot. Kind of opens up the pocket for the five, too, if he ends up wanting to shoot the five in the side pocket. Played it straight in. Might have been a little just too far down the rail where he was worried about possibly missing the three if he played it in the nine. Looks like he's playing position for the side pocket. If he gets on the wrong side, it's not so easy to get on the six. And... He can just stop it there, I guess. He is on the wrong side almost. It's one of the worst spots, really. Yeah. And I was actually uh, going to say when he was lining that up, because I saw him line up for the side pocket, and I thought to myself, well, I might want to go to the corner here because of of this in particular. Mm -hmm. I still go for the combo. Got out of it. I'd much rather be about where the nine is for the play the six in this combo, even though the combo's lined up real nice. Look, they don't come any nicer than that. Yeah, you just got to try to stick the six there. Did that well. Going to want to get straight on the seven so you can get straight on the nine. Little more angle than he would have wanted. He'll cheat the thick part of the pocket here. Try to slow the cue ball down with draw. He can come around three rails and shoot the nine in the same pocket as That's the seven. I was about to ask you if, if you would consider that because I, I, I kind of like that. Um, I don't think you can hold and it's hard to pocket the ball with the side pocket there. And that's what he's done. Nice hit. Got to really fall through long on a shot like that, hitting multiple rails, getting through the thick ball angle. So filler as usual off to the races here. Couple half mistakes from John. Unlikely kicking error. Barely missed the carom. He'll be looking for, to get his chance in the third rack here. Yeah, he's got to come out of his chair. That was a break and run by Joshua Filler. You know, as of late, he has really come into his own. And when he's at the table, he seems to control it almost completely. Just judging by his track record, he's playing almost perfect pool. Mm -hmm. Some of the other matches going on right now, we'll read a few off here and there in between racks, is Roland Garcia versus Lee Van Cortez. Uh, uh, Gwyn Fos Long playing Scatter Woodward. Now Yuki Oi and Alex Kazakis, Eklund Kachi and Robbie Capito, Conrad Yushushin and Mario He. Albin Ocean and Shane Van Boning. So you got some great matches going on. I'll read some more off after uh, this rack. Josh going after it square that time. Rack opening up pretty well. John's going to have a shot on the one. Three and four tied up. <coughs> Has to deal with avoiding the scratch here on the one. I feel like it's just thick enough that he can get through to the side rail, past the side pocket. Catch that point. Big question is how is he going to negotiate the three? See how he followed that a little bit to just make sure he got past the point yep. and held the, held the cue ball. That was awesome. That was a good shot. 
thought it was too close for that. He came a good inch below that uh, corner. He has to try to run into it here. He has a good natural angle. Just a little bit of spin manipulation if he needs to. High on the cue ball, easy to control. Just missed it. There'll be some safe options here. Nothing really near the three, though, or he can play a layup safe. Just trying to play the cue ball behind the 10. Off the short rail, back into it for a freeze. It's looking okay. Can you get over to the 10? Almost. Jeez. Just a hair more spin. John shakes his head. Well, he hasn't given up a simple shot, but a shot to this guy is simple. Yeah, any any, any kind, shot, any yeah. kind of pocketing That's angle, right. you'd make him you, you'd make him a favor to make the ball. Just gonna have some high level cue ball control here. Aha! Got down to the end of a shot clock. Be nice if that three went in for John. Doesn't go. Oh. He can jump at it. The cue ball is going to be traveling towards the corner pocket. Got to be careful to either. He'll have to draw out of it. Surprised he's trying to kick at this. He's having a second thought of the jump. He looked like he was a little discouraged by that roll of getting. He you know, knows he, he, ne he, he needs he, those chances. Yeah, exactly. Especially with the score line how it is in the set. And you can just see the wheels in his head thinking, oh, it just figures. Yeah. You know. Nice oh, hit. my Lord, what a shot. Good shot, Johnny. See how he put some extra speed into that ball to hold the angle? A lot of amateurs are kind of afraid to hit kicks with extra speed, but it holds the kicking angle better. Yeah, good point. That's actually a good point, especially, you know, with him just, he's always been a good bank pool player. I, well, he's won Derby City once. He uh, just won the Texas Open, so. He's good at those outside-the-box shots. John missing pretty much the same shot that Joshua just did. Yeah, got a little roll on the safe here, though. On the and big well roll, actually. Full ball hook on the four. Well deserved. He had to shoot out of a good roll, too. Yeah. Josh can try to use the nine as a blocker here. Kicking the four near the ten, probably calling the ten on a low percentage. Just in case type shot. That's pretty important to do. A lot of players forget to do that, and then they're faced with the uh, option uh, when they make it. Yeah, the option's never going to be positive. No. If it doesn't work out how you want it, you'd still, and it does go in, you'd still be want to be at the table. Oh, I thought that might come up. Yeah, here's a chance for Mora. Two rails back to the five. Everything open. This is what he needed, exactly what he needed to get back in the first set here. He's back at the table quickly. Likes this layout. Second time in the same rack. That doesn't happen very often. Usually you give it up once and that's enough. The other player takes it down. I've known John since he was about eight. Oh, wow. He, I think he started playing in tournaments when he was around six. I was fr I'm from central Canada. He's from eastern Canada. I moved to eastern Canada about mm -hmm. 20 years ago, so I got to know him better around the time he was 15 or 16, but just a great guy. Oh, yeah. What, a, what an amazing uh, task he had before him to switch from right to left-handed. Yeah. But I did notice that he's always been left-eye dominant. Yeah, that's why he switched. Real self-made player, too. Any player coming out of Canada, there's nothing handed to them on a silver platter. We're all on our own. He's done a lot of hard work to get where he's at. Sky's still the limit for him. He's coming up. I've seen that Fargo just 
keep on rising. He's close to the 800. Stayed nicely in line there, and he'll be breaking in the fourth rack. And he steals a game back from Joshua Filler. After having to contend with a good roll by Josh, he kicks the ball in and then has to get a roll himself on a missed four to get back to the table and run it out. And it's funny because usually you don't see an expression out of Filler when he misses a ball. But right now he wants this one's pretty bad and he knows he's facing a, a tough opponent. Yeah, well, it's getting to the point in the tournament that yeah. it, the, the players know there are everyone left is capable of really locking them out for the rest of the set every chance they get. Well, let's see. Uh, we left off with Van Boning in an out ocean. We got Wojak Shevchak, a uh, uh, ten ball champion, Ku, uh, Kun Lin Wu, and then Mateus Snigoki and Coping Chung, Carlo Biato and Alex Pagaline. It's funny how there's two sets there of Filipinos and they both have to play each other. Mm. Corteza and Garcia and now Pagaline and Beato. Uh, Jun Ling Chang versus Pungwan Hashi Holan Xiombing. Then Misko Fortunski and Vitali Patsuda. And we'll get to more of them in a little bit. But keep in mind, those are the final 32. He had to make a ball in the break here, and he's left fielder the one. Big turnarounds, being able to hold your break, or at least worst case scenario, being being able to push after the break. Shot there from Josh. Needs the cue ball to slow down. Caught a little too much angle, but he'll just have to accept a little more angle on the three. Trying to get straight enough that he's not moving towards the nine too much. Good play there. He's got to come back just a hair to have a nice angle to follow two rails for the five. Yeah, I feel like you have to play too much speed in it if he gets inside yeah. the four. So he's just looking at how to stay closer to the middle of the table here. It's kind of in between. Just chose to play angle on the four there instead of getting closer to it and straighter. Always one good thing to note is that a lot of the time you need angles to play ro to when playing when you're playing mm -hmm. rotation. Kind of lends to hitting the cue ball more at a medium speed, not powering the balls. Especially on on new cloth. Yeah, you don't it's have to force cloth. anything. Yeah, exactly. Going to come back two rails into the angle for the seven on the side. A little straighter than he would have liked. We can draw straight back. Drawing angles kind of leading into getting straight on the eight. Enough angle to move up table. Nicely played. So three pretty much flawless racks from Filler in the racks that he's won. Faltered just slightly in rack number three. But back on the right track here.
And Filler takes that three to one lead. Now for the last five uh, pairings, Coping Yi and Tyler Steyer. And then the winner of this match here will play the winner of Francisco Sanchez Reese and Oliver Sholnoki. And then uh, Feder Gorst and Simon Kural, Aloysius Yap and Victor Zelinski. Yeah, this final 32 is just stacked with champions. <laughs> it is. Might be a couple players that slid through and in, into the first round, but going into the next round and even m a lot of the matches in this round, it's hard to pick a winner. Well, you asked me uh, yesterday or the day before to give you a pick, and <laughs> I couldn't give you less than five. Sure. Because uh, there's just... there's. It's just that tough, that tough of a field. Both players not getting great results on the break. See how that plays forward for the rest of the match. Both players have broke from the same spot on all their breaks to the table. They might consider switching it up a bit. Good shot there, freeing up the three. The three was pocketable, but he wanted it in a better spot. Unfortunate thing is he tied the four up with the seven now. Well, he's got a couple of problems to solve. A good angle here on the three to go to the four is one of the solutions, but then he's gonna need a solution from the five to the six. Yeah, six is available in the top left corner pocket, but you have to get a pretty specific angle on the five. First order of business is getting on the four here. Ooh, he's gonna play the carom, that's a nice creative shot. Not messing around with trying to open it up. Yeah, he'll end up straight in on the four, perfect. Overhead it. I don't know if you'll be able to get out this thin enough. Yeah, he's okay. He's getting up quick. It's good. Good shot. A lot of angles don't lead into getting below the six here. He could play it with an angle where the cue ball is drawing to the left side rail and then back underneath into the short rail. There's a few angles that lead into breaking it out, but I don't think he would really want to risk that. Look at that creative shot. I was going to say, I wonder, if, I wonder if coming into it now would, would work. <laughs> I, I didn't see that one. Yeah. And, and now he's tied up another ball. So twice in this rack, he's rearranged the rack and tied up another ball. It Nine still available to two pockets. Yeah. Right side pocket and top right corner pocket. If he gets an angle near the middle of the table on the eight, he can draw over into that small area over, the by, the, oh yeah, yeah. over by the left side rail for the nine on the side. Must have not liked an the angle he was going to get on the six there, so he took the tougher cut into the side. Nice play. Sitting good line now. One more good shot from the eight to the nine. Does he have enough to get there? Yeah. Nice thing about this is if he overdraws it just a little bit too, he should push the nine in a way that he can still make it. A 
That's about perfect. Maybe a little too much angle. No, he's wow, good. what a shot. Great shot. Nice round of applause from a few, few of the fans here. Knowledgeable fans. And the rest of them are kind of half asleep. Hmm. Good rack there from John. Very needed rack from John there. Sets himself up to uh, stay in the set. See if he switches the break up. He's actually one for two on the break. He made a he made a ball on his first break, didn't make a ball on the second one. John's a newly sponsored uh, Predator player. I think he uh, they started was it Las Vegas last year? They gave him they yeah, it's been a couple year. years. Yeah, he likes his equipment. I've talked to him about it. Never, no thought of changing for him. Plays with the 12 4 shaft. Gold rush break cue. Air rush jump cue. Victory tips as well. Oh, so he plays with the standard tips they come with? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, like Predator standards, they do that because of the stiffness of the shaft and they use the soft tips. I've heard that. Uh, and that's by Predator's own admission. Mm -hmm. When I when I bought a Predator shaft, that's exactly what I was told. Why the tip and why to use it. It's a nice blend. I was happy with it when I was playing with it. Ooh, the nine was wider than the side, but the five got in the way. Is the eight going to get in the way of the one? Doesn't look like it from John's reaction there. Only tough ball on the table is the seven, but the six leads into it nicely. He's got to hold his nerve here, which he has plenty of. But I'll make him a good favor to run this rack. I can just tell by watching John's uh, John's reaction while he's in the chair how much he wants to beat Filler. Yeah, and stay in the tournament. He feels like yeah. he's playing enough to win. He just needs a couple rolls on the break. Not quite happening in this set yet. Well, if Filler does get through this uh, this rack, there is the next set. Got a little too much angle here. Going to have to see if he's so thin that he's going to have a hard time holding it. It's pretty thin. If you play some inside, you can slow the cue ball down. I feel like you will. Oh, rare miss from Filler, and John's back in the set here. Big break. For John. And he comes to the table with a hanger. I think he'll draw over to the side rail and try to shoot the five in the same pocket. Shows the safer play. A little more risk of getting straight here, but he does have enough angle going up table. Got to trust the roll of the table on a shot like that, too. Rolled sure. dead straight, ended up exactly sure. where he wanted. I think we were in, in Vegas for his 30th birthday, and now he's 34. Those four years went awfully quick. Yeah. We were we were here. I think it was at the at Griff's at the U.S. Opens. Yeah, he's, he spends his downtime in in Vegas now. Comes back to Toronto to visit his family when he has a lot of downtime. 
But his unofficial home base is Vegas. Nice shot. Started going down there a little more during the pandemic. Canada was locked down a lot more seriously than Nevada was. A lot of good action in the drifts. Sure. They'll be hosting the U.S. Open 8-ball, 10-ball, banks in one pocket. Coming up starting March 3rd. So immediately following the expo here. And I think that was planned to have all the players in the area and build their base. Yeah. Yeah, because it was kind of sad to sit there and commentate some of these U.S. Open 10-ball championships and 8-ball with a 39-player field. I remember that and maybe only There's 10 real world-class exactly, players. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And uh, you sit there and look at the field and say, okay, uh, uh, Shane wins three 10-ball uh, championships in a row. Yeah. Should have won three 8-ball championships in a row, but he scratched on a break and Alex ran out on him for the 8-ball. Great recovery jump shot by John there on the six. And we're looking at Hill Hill in this first set. Remember, it's a best of three sets now. It won't go to a shootout unless it goes Hill Hill in the third set. But still, winning that first set is a major mental advantage going forward for the rest of the match. Yeah. And John's worked hard, and he's tied it up at three. Some Canadian fans in the crowd there. Ryan Kendall, a good friend of mine. Which are no same side for John. It's the break he feels strongest with, and he's going to stick with it. Switch his hands to break back to his right hand. Has more power. Pretty good hit. Got the one that time. For the three, lining up for a combo, not going to happen, but he's got a good shot on the two. It's a good looking rack for John. You'd like to have a little bit of an easier shot on this two ball, but Dems the rolls. If he's straight enough to draw, he's not really straight enough to draw in front of the eight, so I feel like he's going to have to play the two in the corner. There are some tracks going up table with the cue ball. I think the safest play is to play the two in the corner here. Just accepted a little more cut angle on the three. Most obvious positional track is kind of covered by the six, and the and the four is or pocket for the four is covered. But I'm going to go ha have to go back across table twice here. Ooh, ran into the six. I think you got to stay on offense here. I think you got to go for the combo on the five. The four is going to be very controllable. It'll just end up over the pocket. And this is a big shot in the first set here. It's called the five.
Got it. Nice shot. Four balls controlled decently. Just want the proper angle on the six to make the position going towards the seven easy enough. Feel like around where he is, a little straighter than that would be best. See what kind of angle he gets here. He's looking down the line himself, hoping for an angle that's going to push him to the right. I think he's got it. Going to have to power at this ball. Yes, he chooses to follow. There it is. Ooh, came up a little short. You could run into the eight here. In fact, I think he will. He's going to have to over hit it too much and flirt with the side pockets coming across table. Goal here is to push the eight over the opposite corner pocket. Oh, didn't quite push over how he wanted. He's got the carom. I feel like he's going to go. Yeah, he called it already on the 10. A referee making the call there after John calls it. It's Dave from Amarillo, Texas. Ooh, a rush by the shot clock. Got about seven seconds. Nice shot. First shot. To, first set to Mora. Good. After, Go ahead. After trailing the first two games, John wins one, loses one, and then wins three in a row. Good competitive set there. Very few mistakes from both players. Only one missed ball each. John finishing off with a break and run in style. Yeah, I, was, I was about to ask you if that was a break and run. I, I thought it was. And so Filler's going to be put to the test in this match. And so is John. He's got to keep filling his chair. That's right. How are the outside tables doing? <laughs> Good question. Let's take a look. Uh, All righty. Lee Van Corteza leads Roland Garcia 3-1 to one in the first set. Skyler Woodward is tied with Quinn Long from Vietnam. Alex Kazaki has won the first set over Naoyuki Oi. Eklin Kachi tied it two with Robbie Capito. Conrad Yushushin has won the first set over Mario He. Shane Van Boney leads one game to z uh, one game in the second set, has lost his first set to Al uh, Albin Ocean. Okay. Uh, uh, Kun Lin Wu, 3-0 over Wojek Shevchek. And Ko Ping Chung trails Mateus Sinoki, Snegoki, 3-1 in the first set. Biato has won his first set and leads one game zero in the, set in the second over Alex Bagalai. Uh, Patsuda has lost the first set to Mishko Fortunski. Jun Ling Chang has won his first set over Pung Wan Hashi Holen. And Ko Ping Yi trails 2-0 in the first set to Tyler Steyer. Sanchez, Francisco Sanchez, first set over Snogloki, Snogloki. And then, uh, where are we at here? Fetter Gorst leads three games to two in the first set over Sismon. Ural. And then Victor Zolinski leads one game to zero over Aloysius Schiap. That's pretty, they, that's two fast players. That's got to, let me update that, see what happens. 
Josh's got a thin cut here on the two. feel like he's going to play offense here. Safe's tempting because there's such a there's a big wall of behind the four or five. Can create natural distance. Best case scenario is he leaves the two by the ten. Hmm. Got caught in between shots there. Didn't really commit to the safe. First first chance at the rack tomorrow here. Just undercut it. Good shot down the line there of Mora. Real quiet cueing, real calm over the ball. Just misjudged the cut angle slightly. Filler's going to play a bunch of inside on the cue ball here to slow the cue ball down. Decided that shot's a little too thin, so he's going to play the bank. Both players getting down low on their shot clock in the last couple shots here. Things haven't been quite straightforward. Little dicey around the four there. Yeah, I think he's going to draw it. Try to draw in between the five nine. If it doesn't get perfect, there'll be a carom option. Good shot. Trying to hang the four in the pocket here. Oh, we followed them both in. What's going to happen with the five? It's okay. Tracks coming around three rails are kind of blocked by the eight nine. It's going to be looking at maneuvering around those balls. Could play in front of the eight and around the nine. Kind of check the angle there to make sure he got long enough. Draw angles leading to the right, to the left of the nine. Yeah, those little half chances are big against Filler. Not that they're easy. John having a chance to win the first game here in the second set. Missed a tough pot on the two. I think he'll just cinch this. I don't think he'll bother powering up and trying to get closer to it. Look how much easier that shot looks than on the overhead. Right. Yeah, it looked like there was more angle sure. on the overhead. It really did. Cued it well. Real low on the cue ball, killing the speed coming off the rail. And Filler takes game one of the second set. He'll be breaking. He made the one on the side last break, so he might have found something there. That he can try to reproduce. John doing a bit of mental awareness stuff in his chair there. Works with Tara Danino out of New York, out of New York on his mental game. Sports psychologist, someone, any, someone everyone can take a look into contacting if they need help on the mental side. Kind of just look like a reassurance look on his face. Kind of type of talk like, you know you can do it. Nothing down for filler. Rack's pretty open. Toughest cue ball movement's going to be between the two and the three. Might try to play off the seven here to slow the speed of the cue ball down.
touchy shot. He's got to get into the right side of the seven. Cue ball's kind of leading into the middle of the seven a little more. Hit. Ooh, that's a bad roll there. <clears throat> Tough spot too, where any kind of kick safe is going to be going to be left up to luck here. So this set kind of starting off the same way as the first set did for John. Super tough to judge that one. Didn't really have any other options. Open table for filler here. Bit of cue ball movement from the three to the four. Middle of the table is reasonably open. He's just thinking where he wants to be on the three to get back down for the four here. Good amount of angle, so he doesn't have to overhit the cue ball coming back towards the four. Going to go inside around two rails, back into the middle of the short rail. Good shot. Cue ball was running to the left a little bit. Just wanted to keep that running angle going there. Just going to get through these last five balls pretty quickly. Doesn't want to make them both here, I don't think. But he'll play. Yeah, just hang in the five. Nice and in control. Nice and close to all his shots. You know, when you get in that two range now, it's like, okay, well, you only got a break and run two to win the set, right? Mm -hmm. Even though the break and run percentage is, isn't super high, you always think it can happen. And, and if you're if you're in this spot for filler, he's, he's feeling confident because he's feeling like he can finish out the set, keeping John in his chair here. He's 40% on the break overall. One for two in this set, one for three in the first set. It's only been three missed balls in the nine games played overall. Filler going from the same spot. Trying to find that speed and contact point that's going to make the one in the side. Just missed it this time. Coming towards the corner, but it's not going to go. John's going to have a shot here. Kind of a replay of the first set. Yeah. Wins two games, and John comes up with a nice opening. and Open rack as well. Trying to get as straight as he can on the five in the side from the four. I feel like John's learned how to manage the shot clock pretty well. 
has a lot of experience under these conditions now. His general pace of play is a little on the slower side. But learning to play with the shot clock is not, not, not hearing him getting down to his last 10 seconds ever. Timing it out well where he doesn't look like he's rushing it, but getting on with it where he's not interrupted by the 10 second beep. That does seem to startle some of the players. Yeah, you don't want it. You, you definitely don't want to hear it at all. And this was the key to this rack here. He's straight on the five now. Last five balls playing pretty well, all leading into each other. Just got to maintain angle here. Got going the wrong way. Can still get back to where he wants. Stun the cue ball to the right of the eight. Swinging back two rails with left spin. Nice shot. Perfectly in line there, a little dangerously close to it, but that'll definitely do. That's the advantage of playing into the angle. He overhit the shot, but he's on the line for so long that it didn't it didn't hurt him at all. I love coming down the line of the shot. See there, holds the cue very lightly. Kind of holds the cue off the web of his hand, which is something that about 20% of the top players in the world do. Just allows you to get a real loose grip on the cue. Good rack from John. He'll be looking to put together something offensive off the break. Nice run from the break. Filler breaks dry. And John says thank you. Well, Zielinski has, def has uh, won the first set over Aloysius Yap. Who else have won sets yet? Kunlin Wu over Chef Shek, one set. They're into the second. Cortez a one set over Roland Garcia. Good square hit from Mora. Again, both players just not quite working out for them on the break. Eight ball might have pocketed or might have blocked the pocketing angle for the one. Could be a really thin carom playing the eight into the corner. Six, seven, ten are tied up, but it looks like he'll be able to call him with a six, ten if he needs to. Well, he had enough room. So, chance for Filler to get on the hill here.
six ten combo looming in his future, along with the five eight. Yeah, the five's going to drift off to the left after pocketing the eight. So he's going to be wanting to think about how he can get his cue ball in line with the five going to the left. Got a little too much angle here, which isn't a huge deal, it's, but it could be a factor considering the, he'll want to get good on the combo to have a high percentage to make it. Look at that creative play. I missed that one. Nice shot. <laughs> Three ball combo from Filler. Mm -hmm. He didn't wait to get have to get down to the six 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 ten. Combo. Yeah, I just didn't want to mess with the with the five eight combo, and I don't blame him. Thought it was kind of odd when he came up a little with so much angle on the four, but obviously uh -huh. he had a plan in mind. Not quite the same plan we devised. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> That's how these top level players think. That's right. You know, maybe if I'm on the table I might have seen it, but it's just a overall it's a nice creative play. Something that a lot of mid level players would probably miss. Filler, both players sticking with the same break despite not having a ton of success. It's tempting, you know. He knows how to hit this break properly, and he, and he feels like if he hits it in a certain way, good things are going to happen. There it is. Now nah, it just got kicked out again, but pushed into the corner. And a timely break for Filler. Cue ball's running into the six here. Might have to choose the thinner pocket. No, he can't. Cue ball's going to scratch. He can stun to the right of it. Got to think about how the cue ball is going to be coming around two rails if he chooses to do that. I feel like it's actually tracking between the 5 7. That was quite a shot there to play that angle. Avoid the 6 and. Get that deep into the corner. Mm -hmm. Had to to get between the five seven, just over hit the speed a bit. Does have a pocket for the three past the nine. Chose to back off that. Kind of tough to follow the cue ball from where he was and get closer to the four. Tough to see whether he's left an edge here. I uh, can't tell if he has. John just went over and looked at the contact point to pocket it, so I feel like he's got at least a swerving chance at it. Going outside, so he might be playing safe. Good shot. How's the cue ball going to end up? A little long. Well, Banks there. Yeah. Pos yeah, position lies perfect. He'll be going for this, no doubt. And again, this is where that experience in other games comes into play. Nice shot. Not going to come up on 90% of the shots, but when you need to bail yourself out and you're able to make that type of shot at a higher percentage, it's a very dangerous weapon. This is exactly where John came up with three in a row in the last set right? to win. bit of free-rolling mentality here too knowing that he's won the first set 
And worst case scenario, he'll still be playing a third set if he doesn't get these last two games. So that'll be positive for him mentally. Smart shot there, keeping the ball on the close side of the table. He's finished a little straight. See if he decides to draw back for the side here. Nice shot. Adding some running spin to come back towards the nine a little more. Perfectly on the 10. Very high level set from both players so far. Not much between them. Both just not quite getting it going off the break, but John will be looking to do that here. What has the break percentage been? Around 50. Break and runs out of... 12 games so far have only been two. Yeah. Each player has one. I wouldn't mind seeing either player switch it up when they're only at 50%. The way they're breaking. Ball pocketing, yeah. <clears throat> Going to stick with the same one. Struck nice and square there. This looks good for John. Yeah, first three balls are playing good. He's going to have to get into the short side of the five. Nine's kind of blocking some of the tracks playing over to that area, but he'll find, he should find a way to get over there. This is good. If you can come below the four here, play into this right long rail, back over into the angle, just past the side pocket. Want to play this shot on the thinner side, add some outside spin. Keep the energy in the cue ball here. Has to get below the five so you can get an angle stunning back towards the six in the same pocket. It's going to have some angle going to the right, not as much as he'd like. Like to be behind the shot here to know exactly how straight he is. I feel like he's pretty straight. Hmm. Gonna have to come up with something here. He could draw at it and play a bank on the six. If he has any ho any chance of forcing it enough to the right, he'll try to.
He's pretty straight. Yeah, he might just settle on making the ball and going up a little, making the six ball and coming back up for the seven. He's going to cross the six. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's not enough angle to come all the way back for the seven. Yeah, though. you can tell his body yeah. language. He's worried about yeah, he worried about the double kiss here. That's why I said follow the ball. He kind of stunned it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, had, he needed about six more inches on that ball. He can still play the six safe and try to play the cue ball behind the eight. Good call. Oh, look, look at his speed. Ooh. It's good enough. If Filler does have the right edge, he's going to try to play the cue ball back to the same area. Looks like he might try to play it rail first. Or as you just mentioned, come right back up where he's at. Not sure oh. if I played inside on that ball. Uh, yeah, I mean... He must have. Been, he must not have been trying to get the cue ball behind the eight nine because he would have known that the cue ball is going to come back to the middle more if he played inside. I'm not sure what other shots there were. Maybe he was trying to catch a rail first. Yeah, rail first, make it. Yeah, or even rail first, it kicks off and goes back uh, on the left side of the line. Right. Nine. Oh yeah. Oh. Big stroke there from John. Table. Needs a half roll here. He's got it. Very thin on the seven, but makeable. Able to switch hands when he needs to, shooting this one right-handed. What, oh, that's gonna cost him. Oh. Actually got a roll here yes. where it didn't leave Phil or anything. Probably going to be jammed up behind the eight, though, on the next shot. Can he bank this and just stop the cue ball there? No, he's just going to be behind the eight. Too risky, yeah. Like too risky. No sense. Oh, look what he just did here. He's giving it back up again. Yeah, pocket's open enough for the seven. Sure. Natural angle to come up for the, for the eight, and then... Nine's laying in front of the pocket. Well, Just a couple small mistakes. Filler overcutting the four in the first set, leaving him open on the safe here. Nice shot. Side pocket. Oh, that was close. Yeah, I'm lucky to catch uh, the points overall. Yeah. If he catches before the point, think how nice it's laying. He's still okay. Gonna come up yeah. the middle twice here. Play the nine on the side. Just snuck it in the thick side of the pocket. And we're looking at another hill hill set here. Well, on the last one, John was able to break and run out. Yeah, he'll be looking to reproduce that this set. shot this is exactly when John had his break and run in the last set every player's dream when you come to break the balls and you're on the hill break and run out yeah, yeah he's been making thinking. the one on the side on a few breaks that's what he's going for mm -hmm. he's not that he's broken bad I mean he's at 50% which is about reasonable for these conditions but he's stuck with the same break throughout the whole set. It's the one that he believes that he can hit the best and possibly get some good results off of.
Yeah, it's not unusual for a uh, filler to make, I guess, two mistakes in the same rack. Yeah, it's happened a couple times, just yeah. like tough ones, half mistakes, I'd call them. Where's the one? Where's the two? Didn't get up there. Maybe a carom. Can you hit enough two ball? Yeah, if he can't, he'll still draw it. I think the question is, can he even hit it thin enough? Good camera angle there. I say it's leaning towards he can't hit it thin enough. tough to play safe out of the spot as well. If you play some inside on this, you can kind of stop the cue ball movement to the right. Looks like he's thinking about some kind of safe. Resigning that he's going to run into the two or the seven, come up table. Good shot. So oh, look cue at ball this ends up here. Right behind the 10. Yeah. Perfect shot. Great shot. Filler doesn't have any of the obvious rails here. It's actually in a real bad spot. There might might be an opening between the the three ball. Go right by the three ball at the two, but I don't think there is. Just by this this camera angle looks like you might be able to drive a ball through there, doesn't it? Yeah, off the short rail first. Yes. Yeah. If you put a bit of check on it, I there is possible track there. There's really nothing else. Yeah, I don't see anything else, but uh, even that's, you know, you're you're probably figuring 30% chance of going through there. It's going to try it gonna three shot. rails. Yeah. There Almost it is. at it. Yeah, there it is for Mora. Shot, at, shot to win the set here. And closed out Josh Schilder in two straight sets. Stay out of that shootout. Because I don't think these I don't think either of these two would go into that shootout thinking I've got the best of it. Oh yeah, and, and at that point it's real big pressure too. Yep. Every every player is trying to avoid it. Cue ball slightly going the wrong way, but he can follow through it. It's all there for him. Just got to hold his nerve. Come across right to where he is now. Wanted to be straighter on the five here, but still has an option to draw over to the right side rail and play into the angle. Can come straight back up the middle if he likes as well. Good shot, just cinching the position. Lots of room over there. I think he's got it, and this is a big win for John. Mm -hmm. Big win for any player. As of late, beating Josh Filler has been no picnic. Yeah, imagine what his match record must have been at the Derby winning all those tournaments. Must have been like 50 and 3 or something more. If any of you out there have just joined us, these four balls and John wins in two straight sets over Joshua Filler. This is the final 32 of the Las Vegas Open. Started out with 96 players. 
We're down to the final 32. It's about to be the final 31. Let's see what kind of I don't see anyone in the left in the 16 matches that have won their set yet. It'll be the first win of the final 32 of the 16 matches. Great match by both players. Nice win for John. Good luck to him going forward and we'll see Filler in the World 10 Ball Championships later on this week. The funny thing is, John John runs out on the hill both times, both sets. George Tehachan and Eric Harlefson, thank you folks for joining us. We'll see you soon. <laughs>